Let's get some insights on the news shaping the markets. I welcome in here, Joe Bruce Wales is with me, Chief Economist at RSM. And moments ago, you and I got a laugh because here we are, everybody has one or two phones, right? I have two yep. here. Every phone in the New York Stock Exchange blew up saying how magnitude 4.7 earthquake occurred in the New York City area remain indoors. Did you feel it? Yeah, I thought it was the subway. Seriously, people, it's a little bit much that we're going to close the exchange. You're not trading, but the exchange. I felt it, but it well, just didn't it says, seem like much. How do you know we're closing the exchange? It says residents are advised to remain okay, indoors. Okay, I just, the guys were here were saying we're closing the exchange at 1130. We'll have to see if that's true, right? Oh, that's big news and as if it that's sounds the like, case. You know, it's just structural, you know, checks for safety. I'm from California. Oh. This wasn't quite big enough to matter where I'm from, but here it's a good idea. They take precaution and check everything. Oh, that's important. But you important. know what? When I thought the earthquake, uh, I thought maybe the market had moved okay. on that jobs report, right? Because yeah. it was so good. Yeah, and I want to talk about the jobs report. I will just say, folks, that this was a pretty big earthquake, and most everybody here felt it. 10, 15 traders went out to the fire chief in the front. Every trader I asked here felt it. Some were nervous. We all rem remembered 9 11 very clearly. Some said about it a subway that it felt like that. Anyhow, it seems that everybody is fine and they're obviously checking for structural damage around the city. New York, New Jersey, yeah. Connecticut, even down to Delaware, it was felt. Um, that being said, we got in a jobs report that yesterday, Neil Kashkari sort of, you know, spooked the markets because originally he said in the last meeting he was penciling in about two cuts. Then he said if inflation stays like this, maybe no cuts are needed. Now we get a jobs report. Spin it forward for us, Joe. All right. So we saw a 300,000 300, increase in job creation in the month of March, along with a very steady and stable unemployment rate at 3.8 percent. That's the 27th straight month below 4 percent. Most importantly, on a year over year basis, wage growth slowed from 4.3 to 4.1. And I want to emphasize this, an additional 469,000 people entered the job force on the month. You know, when you take a look at this, right, what you see is American exceptionalism. The economy is just outperforming everybody, all of its trade partners, all of its peers. We're able to grow faster, more jobs, lower unemployment as inflation comes down. This is what you want to see right now in this economy. This is encouraging and constructive. That's why the S&P 500 is up 1% on in early trading this morning. So what does this mean for cuts? Does this mean cuts are back on the table? Because now, yeah. yes, as of late yesterday, people started, you know, Bostick's been saying one cut maybe the whole time. Um, and yesterday, it sort of, we started to question the cuts. Why now do we feel cuts may be back on the table? Okay, and why so is the market reacting like this? It's important that we look we just look for signal amidst the noise, right? So what I do is I look at market expectations on the federal funds rate. Even with all of the noise from Rafael Bostic and Neil Kashkari, yeah. good central bankers, yeah. um, we never did move below 50% on the rate cuts in September, uh, excuse me, in June, September, and December. I looked just before we came on, 56% probability in June and 65% probabilities in uh, September and mm -hmm. December. That means the market's pricing in three 25 basis rate point cuts starting in June. That's the Fed's forecast. That's been my forecast since last year. So I'm very comfortable with where they're at. We have way too much market chatter and not enough focus on fundamentals right now. Fundamentally, we're going to get that rate cut in June unless inflation turns and begins to go back up. And so at this point now, you talk about, look, health care, government, construction, yeah. I think education did well. These are, I mean, you know, hospitality and leisure um, had some ads as well. When you think about what's going on, the, mar the, the economy is looking pretty good, yep, right? That's right. And when I decompose the data, yeah. moderate to strong wage gains were clustered in 70% 70 70 of all the job gains this morning. Mm -hmm. That's extraordinary. That's right. really what you want to see. So that's big picture here. Um, are you concerned about oil's move and moving to the highest levels oh, yeah. of the year? Tell me about that. That idiosyncratic risk around geopolitical tensions out of the Middle East that's driving that along yeah. with cuts by OPEC is really to me right now the major risk out there around the domestic and global outlook. 
Now, should something happen over the weekend to drive oil higher, yeah, then we're going to begin to see a repricing of risk here in the market. But as of right now, the status quo holds. If the status quo holds, we'll get those rate cuts. Yeah, I mean, yesterday, as, as all that news was breaking, you had all that went on um, geopolitical risks. I went through it yesterday. But that oil is fighting the Fed. A oil bit. is sort of in the way of no. the Fed's plan to try and do a cut. Because if okay. gasoline's going to be surging and such, we're back to inflation. Now, $85 right per no? barrel is not going to cause a major move in inflation, okay? The Summer Fed will, driving the Fed will look up. through that. Now, that's, a, that's an inconvenience for people who are going to be on the road. Understand yeah. that. You'll see it in consumer sentiment. But it's not going to cause inflation to turn the corner and go back up. The Fed's looking not at CPI, at top-line PCE, which is at 2.5%. That inflation rate is tolerable. We expect it to move down, albeit very slowly, through the remainder of the year. And those are the conditions whereby the Fed can relax what is a too restrictive policy rate between 5.25 and 5%. What am I leaving out? What, well, think, what's all like that you're thinking about on the daily that I may not have mentioned? Productivity. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, we've got a, policies now aligned with long term trends towards automation, uh, the, what's coming down the pike with artificial intelligence and quantum computing are going to drive productivity higher. That's the magic elixir here. You get higher productivity, you can grow faster, have that 35 to 4% unemployment rate, mm -hmm. and have mm -hmm. price stability, which mm -hmm. means we can move that terminal rate yeah. from where it is now, 5.5%, back down to something around 3%, which is what we want. Right, understood. Joe, it's yeah. great to see you. Um, I, I'll see what they say here about the earthquake. That was something. That was something else. We, you know, we're not used to earthquakes here in New York City. So you were here on a blowout quarter. Yeah. A big earthquake. I don't know what the third thing is. Well, thanks for making Thank the you. ground move, Nicole. Thank you. Joe Bruce Willis, always super of RSM.